Creating types for libraries is so much harder than day-to-day -day TypeScript usage, but it's also not quite as scary as it looks. I learned a ton from building out this signal slice utility with Chow Tran, and I thought it would be fun to go through how some of this insane looking TypeScript works. I think what makes this look so intimidating is that you are seeing the end product, and it just looks like a mess of cryptic code. But that's not how it's built. Just like with any code, it's built one step at a time, and it is much more approachable that way. So let's go back to the first pull request that added signal slice to the ng extension library and talk about how the typing worked at that stage. The initial implementation of signal slice supported an API that looked like this. Keep in mind that the API has changed since then. Reducers don't actually even exist anymore. So at this point, signal slice is a function that accepts a configuration object as a parameter. This object can contain properties to define the initial state, sources, reducers, and selectors. One part of the challenge of typing this API is that we need to define what is allowed to be supplied by the user. For example, what type of data can the initial state be? Another part of the challenge is defining what type of data will be returned to the user. What is the type of data returned from this signal slice function? Without that, you won't get all that useful typing information when using this function. This can get quite tricky because the type of sources that are allowed to be supplied will depend on the type of data that is supplied as the initial state. The same goes for the reducers, and the types that are returned by the signal slice function are going to depend on what sort of reducers the user has defined, among other things. So we need to figure out how to accurately represent all of this in a generic way with TypeScript. It sounds hard, and it sort of is, but if you do it one step at a time, it becomes a lot less intimidating. Let's start by considering the definition of the signal slice function with very basic typing. This provides us with the general shape of the API and what it supports, but it allows us to supply almost any type of data, and it gives us no typing information back. The signal slice function just returns any. Let's improve things here by using a generic to capture and utilize the type of the initial state that is supplied. Now we can start getting a bit more specific. By adding this t signal value, we can capture the type of whatever is supplied as the initial state. This type then becomes available for us to use elsewhere. You can see we are using it to better define our sources. These sources can be an array of observables that emit values that match the initial state. We also use this partial or value type because our source observables can actually emit values that match the entire initial state or just a portion of that state. We also make use of this t signal value generic to type the function supplied to the selectors config. We now know that the state parameter here will be a signal that contains data of the type t signal value. Let's keep going by adding another generic for our reducers. Just like we did with the initial state, we are now capturing the type of data that is supplied to reducers using a generic. We aren't making use of that generic type anyway yet, but we will later when we better define the return type for signal slice. However, we need to take things a bit further here. We don't want users to be able to just supply whatever they like as reducers. We want a reducer to follow a very specific format. So we create an extra type called named reducers. We are using a generic again here so that we will be able to pass in the specific type of t signal value or initial state value when we use this type. This type defines a named reducer as an object that contains keys that are strings, and those keys have values that are of the type reducer. Like the partial or value we used before, this reducer type is actually defined outside of signal slice like this. This type is a function that takes in a previous and next value. And again, we are using generics to capture the types of the values passed in. T value for previous and T next for next. We are then using the t value generic for the return type, so we know that this reducer will return a value that has the same type as whatever is passed in as the previous value, or a partial of that value. So ultimately, this means that our named reducers will be an object that contains keys that are strings and values that are functions that take in a previous and next value and return a partial of the passed in previous value. Now to make sure that the value the user passes in for reducers conforms to this named reducers format, we can do this. We have our t reducers generic extend named reducers, and we also pass it the type of our initial state so that it can figure out the types for the reducers correctly based on the initial state. Now if the user tries to supply a reducer in an incorrect format or creates a reducer that returns the wrong type of data, it will fail with a relevant type error. 
We can do the same thing for our selectors, but it's actually a little easier because we don't need to worry about passing in the initial state. We can just create a named selectors type like this. This is the same general idea as a named reducer, except that they can just be any type of function. Then we can also use extends in the same way for our named selectors. We're almost done for typing the basic version of this utility, but we still need to define what it is that this signal size function actually returns to us rather than just using any. We can define a type for signal slice that looks like this. There are actually some more things in the signal slice type, but we haven't talked about them in this video, so I'm just ignoring those to keep things from being confusing. The idea here is that our signal slice will return a signal that contains our T signal value type, which we will pass in when using this type. However, as well as having the properties of a signal, it will also include the properties of the selectors and action methods types. The selectors are the automatically created selectors for accessing state, and the action methods are created automatically based on the supplied reducers. They are functions we can call that trigger the relevant reducer. The selectors type takes in the tSignal value generic and looks like this. This will be an object that has keys matching all of the keys of tSignal value, and the value for each of these keys will be a signal containing the relevant value from the tSignal value or initial state. This is what provides the typing information necessary to access selectors on the state object like this. The action methods type looks like this. This one is a little bit scarier, but follows the same general idea. For every reducer we have defined, it will add a property with a key that matches the reducer's name. This is how we get our automatically created actions for the reducers we define. The value for a particular action will depend on a condition. If the reducer extends this type, that is to say it conforms to this type, we want the value of the action method to be a function that takes no parameters and returns void. If that is not the case, and instead the type of the reducer conforms to this type, we want the value of the action method to be a function that takes in a value, either t value or an observable of t value, and returns void. If the reducer does not conform to either of those types, then we return never as the type. Finally, we can put it all together by having our signal slice function return the signal slice type that utilizes those types we just created. And we pass it the relevant type information it needs, specifically whatever generic types were passed in as the T signal value, T reducers, and T selectors. With this typed properly, we can confidently access the values and methods the returned object provides. We can access the state value directly as a signal, but we can also use the same state object to access the selectors and the methods for our reducers. And we have additional safety when using this function because we can only supply it with values that are actually supported by this API. So that gives us our basic implementation of the types. And then as the library or utility continues to grow, so does the complexity of the typing until we have something that looks indecipherable at a glance like this. But really, we are always just adding support for one thing at a time. That still doesn't mean it's going to be easy. Uh, without Chow's help, adding proper typing for this utility probably would have taken me an extraordinary long time. But even if you have no idea how to do a particular thing, it does make it much more approachable than it might look. So I guess the moral of this video is to give this sort of thing a try. It's not quite as scary as it looks, and it's actually pretty fun to do. Okay, if you like this video, please consider a like or subscribe before you go. Uh, you can find links to Signal Slice in the description if you want to check out the full implementation. And I hope to see you back here again for the next video.